dear organizers, dear colleagues, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to be a participant in the scientific conference Mare Nostrum. I express my regret that this difficult situation did not allow us to gather and discuss this topic live. On the other hand, I express my great gratitude to the organizers who, despite this difficult epidemiological situation, managed to organize scientific conference in the best possible way. Thank you for that. The topic of my paper is liability of the ship owner for legal affairs of third parties. The liability of the ship owner in general was not the same through different periods of development of the Roman state. In order to talk about the maritime law and thus the liability of the ship owner, the Roman state had to cross the road from the city-state to a large state that covered the entire Apennine Peninsula and after the victory over uh, Carthage, the entire Mediterranean. The liability of the ship owner should be observed through different periods, through the period of the late Republic, the classical period and post-classical period. The liability of the ship owner in the period of late Republic, uh, which although it lasted only a century and a half, was not the same. In the beginning, Pater Familias, uh, Pater Familias performed maritime transport himself. He was not only the owner of the ship, but also the captain of the ship. Also in this period, the dominant principle was Alteri Stipulari Nemo Potest, which meant that only the pater familias was the one who could independently conclude legal transactions in his own name and for his own account, that is, to organize a sailing endeavor and to bear all the benefits and costs of giving the ship. With the further development of legal and economic transactions, and especially with the need of the pater familias to conclude contracts with different contracting parties and in different places, it conditioned the narrowing of the scope of his legal capacity in favor of alieni juris and slaves. This narrowing of legal capacity meant that alieni juris and slaves could appear in legal transactions and conclude legal transactions on orders of pater familias. Pater familias was considered the owner of the thing that took its own fruits. Or as Guy said, adiquititur autem nobis non solum per nosmet ipsos, sed itisum per eos quos in potestate manu mancipiove habemus, item per eos servos in quibus usum fructum habeus, item per homines liberos et servos alienos quos bona fide possidemus, de quibus singulis diligenter dispiciamus. The problem in this new relation was uh, legal uncertainty because no one wanted to make uh, legal deals with persons alieni juris and slaves because they did not have uh, their own property and could not bind the pater familias in this way. In fact, in this case, obligatio naturals were uh, created, unclaimable but chargeable. In order to solve this problem and prevent a breaking of legal and uh, economic development, the Praetor introduced six new lawsuits, Acciones Adiectitiae Qualitatis. In this way, an exception was made to the inter partes rule, the principle of alteri stipulari nemo potes was departed from, and the contractual liability of the pater familias was extended. One of these lawsuits was the Actio Exercitoria, which referred to those cases when the pater familias, ship owner or exercitor navis, appointed a person, alieni juris or a slave, as a captain of the ship. In that case, the praetor allowed the lawsuit to be filed not only against the captain of the ship, person, alieni juris or slave, but also against the ship owner, exercitor navis, who in the, that case was responsible for the entire amount in solidum. The precondition for filing a lawsuit was the voluntas of the ship owner, exercitor, expressed in the legal act of appointment prepositio. Now we will move to classical period. The characteristic of classical period and liability of the ship owner was his will, voluntax exercitor, to appoint a certain person as the captain of the ship magister navis. 
A person, alieni iuris, a slave or a free citizen, could be appointed a master of navies. In the legal transactions, um, if the legal uh, transactions was concluded between the persons appointed by the pater familias, in this case exercitor, and if there was a breach of the contract, the other contracting party could file a lawsuit both the person with whom it uh, concluded the contract, based on the lawsuit from the contract, and the pater familias himself on the basis of a lawsuit actio exercitoria. The liability of ship owner was in solidum for the entire amount since the basis of his liability is precisely his voluntas to appoint a certain person. The pater familias was applied to carefully choose person for the captain of the ship. This type of liability further aggravated the position of the exercitor because his liability was already increased by acciones adiatitiae qualitatis and in the classical period it was given the feature of objective liability, culpa in custodiendo. The post-classical period was marked by general decadence in all segments of the Roman state. This was also reflected in the ship owner's liability. The basis of liability was not the voluntas exercitor, but the safety of navigation and protection of the interest of passengers. Thus, not only the ship owner, but also the captain of the ship can be called to account. The captain of the ship was the other contracting party, but the contract was binding on the ship owner as well. Therefore, before concluding the contract with the captain of the ship, the other contracting party had to be informed about the limits of his authority, what was stated in prepositio, as well as to take account both the personal characteristics of captain and the personal characteristics of the ship owner. To conclude, the liability of the ship owner in Roman law went from the principle of alteris stipulari nemo potest and its deviation, through the voluntax, voluntas exercitor, to the safety of navigation and the protection of the interest of passengers. The liability of the ship owner, determined and defined in Roman law, it is the foundation of modern law in the field of maritime law. You will be able to read more about the liability of ship owner in my paper. Thank you for your attention.